Well, welcome to Christmas at Crossbridge. Are you glad you made it today? Yeah, yeah me too. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us online. There may have been some challenges that kept you from coming here. Maybe, just maybe. Maybe weather conditions, maybe internet was giving you a little bit of trouble. But thank you for fighting through and making plans to be here. What a great way to celebrate Christmas. Do me a favor, just turn to those people around you, whether they're strangers or friends. Just wish them a very Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to those of you joining us online as well. So glad you're here. Hey, thanks for including us in your Christmas plans. I'm willing to guess that these are not the only plans you have on the docket for the next couple days. Some of you have probably been planning, like I have, since early November for what this Christmas is going to be shaped like. For some of you, maybe as you're here today, you might be opening some presents. Anyone planning on opening some presents? Come on, kids, this is for you. Yeah, I love that. Any of you planning on doing some of this, some feasting with your family and friends? Get the bib ready. It's coming, right? <laughs> Woohoo! Now that we've had uh, what has been happening here lately, you might be planning on doing a little bit of this, maybe some sledding. See the joy in the kids' faces? Make sure to bundle them up if you do. After sledding, you might need to do a little of this, some chestnuts roasting over the open fire. Just be careful, okay? Now, you might even have plans for a couple of those old ugly sweaters to begin reappearing because it's part of your family tradition. And maybe the question I'd ask a different way is this. With the time that we have remaining this Christmas season, what are you hoping will take place? What are you hoping will happen? For some of you, you are hoping for a white Christmas, and boy, did you get your answer. Next time, let's just pray for a white minus windy Christmas, okay? Can we all agree to that? Uh, for some of you, you're hoping maybe for that hot trending item or that gift that's been at the top of your gift list. Others of you are hoping that there's enough time in the next two days to get you off the naughty list because you can't handle cold two years in a row in your stocking. Others of you are just hoping that the service isn't too long. I'll let you sit with that for a minute. <laughs> I'm willing to guess that for most of you, there's at least some level of hope within you because there's something about Christmas time where we are drawn to hope, isn't there? Uh, if you're anything like me, that's the case of how it is. Um, Christmas is that time where there's a hope every time I see an unexpected present. There's a hope for me every time I gather together with family and friends. Hope is why we buy Pelotons, because we're hoping for a fitness this year. Hope is why we try again with family and friends who have maybe done us wrong in years past. Hope is why some of us are still Chicago Bears fans. Can I get an amen? All right. That was a very light round of applause. <laughs> hope is why some of you came to church today. For many of us, when it comes to hope, hope is something we do. We hope for a gift. We hope for a white Christmas. We hope for that Norman Rockwell Christmas gathering. But in those moments, uh, I'm here to remind you of something very important this Christmas. That the Christmas message that we see in God's letter to us tells us about, yes, there's a hope that you can do, but there's also a hope that you can have, that you can possess, that you can grab onto. And I want you to know today, no matter where you are, no matter what has happened in your life, and if you had a little bit of time, you'd tell me your story, no matter where you are, where you're from, your background, what burdens you're carrying today, that you can walk out of here today with a hope a hope that you can cling to, a hope that you can know that you know that you know that God is with you. That's the hope that I pray you walk out of here with today, that today you will have a greater hope for your marriage, have a greater hope for your family, have a greater hope for your future. How is it possible to have this hope, to possess this kind of hope? It's possible because of Christmas. It's possible because of the real meaning of Christmas, the original meaning of Christmas. It's possible because... Of Jesus. And I want to share with you that a long time ago in God's letter to us, there is this incredible invitation to know that God heard the cries of his people, people who are lost in darkness and sin and shame. But God said, there's a day marked on my calendar when someone will come and his coming will change everything. And the promise that was true 2,000 years ago is still true today. And this is why 
you can have a hope fully Christmas this year. I want to show you what that is and why that is. As we see the description of this long-awaited Savior in a part of God's message called Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, and I want to read with you maybe some words you've heard before, but I pray you hear it with a new freshness today. At our church, we think this is such a sacred and such an important message that we like to stand as we honor the reading. So would you please do me a favor and just stand with me wherever you are today as we honor the reading of God's message Isaiah chapter 9 says this, Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. There will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us, and the government will rest upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. Would you pray with me? Lord, you are present here with us right now. This is so much more than a service, something so much more than just a checklist for our Christmas activities. And so I pray that in a way that only you can, would you encounter us right where we are and that we may know that, God, you have a message to speak to us and that our ears will be open to hear it, that our hearts will be ready to receive it. We ask it all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The year was 1987. And a young 10-year-old boy named Keith Schubert had a grand hope for his Christmas. This hope centered around the wonderfully most anticipated gift of the entire year. Every kid in my school wanted it. We knew that if we would get this gift, our lives would be forever changed. Gone were the boring old days. And before us were the beautiful, new, transformed days where there's life and excitement and energy. This gift promised all sorts of new entertainment and options and life for us. What is this gift that could bring such transformation? Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the Nintendo Entertainment System. <laughs> How many of you have the Mario Brothers theme going through your mind right now? Doot, 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 doot. I won't make you go ahead. I begged and pleaded for this gift. I knew that if, if I could just get it, my entire life would be changed. So I made guarantees. I made assurances to my parents that I would be a great kid. I made promises. I, I crossed my heart. I hoped to die. I said, I will stick a needle in my eye if that's what it takes to get this gift. And sure enough, on that Christmas morning, as I sat in front of my present with eyes wide open, I tore open the wrapping paper, and there it was, the fulfillment of my dream, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh, and oh, the joy that I felt. Have you ever had a moment like that in your life where your hopes were fulfilled? There's something pretty incredible about it, isn't it? It's hard to even put into words. When you hope to get the job and you do, you hope that she's the one and she is. You hope that he's okay and going to make it through this rough health time and he is. You hope your team wins and they pull it off in the end. There's something pretty incredible about having your hopes fulfilled. But you probably know the flip side of that scenario too, don't you? What it's like for those hopes to go unfulfilled. Maybe for you it's hoping for that job only to be passed over. And thinking that she was the one only to be left at the altar hoping that he's going to be okay only to find out that he's not, hoping that your team can pull it off but know that they lose it right in the final moments, not again. <laughs> There's something so defeating about our hopes when they go unfulfilled. Life can be pretty hard when your hopes take a hit. Maybe you've experienced that this Christmas. Maybe that's what's going on right here and right now in your life. If that's the case for you, I want to remind you of what it is that we saw in God's message to you today. That he says to us, it's actually possible for us to have a hope even when our life doesn't turn out the way we think it should. Even when those things on our wish list or our dreams and desires do not come true. And I know for many of us, if you're like me, you ask the question, how? How is that even possible? It's possible because of the message of Christmas and who it is that came not just to random people, but to me and to you 
to your family and mine, to your friends and mine. And this is what I want to make sure that we grasp this Christmas. And this Christmas message of hope, it actually starts right with this first word. It says, nevertheless. I don't know if you use this word very often, but I don't. But I have in the past. When I was a young father with my kids that were growing up, I'd use this word occasionally. And it usually happened in scenarios like this. I know you don't want to eat your vegetables. Nevertheless, you're going to. Or I know you don't want to go to bed. Nevertheless, it's happening. Nevertheless is a kind of an interesting word. It admits and accepts reality while at the same time signals that a change is coming. In other words, it says, yes, they're the way things are right now. We admit that and we accept that. But we also realize that's not the way things are going to be. That a change is on its way. And I want to make sure that you hear this. For God, that God has a nevertheless message for you, especially for those of you who are low on hope this Christmas. The God's nevertheless message is this. Hey, I know things have been hard for you. I know that darkness has been knocking on your door. I know that for some of you, it feels like the legs of your life have been swept out from underneath you. And you landed flat on your back, looking up in the air, just trying to gasp for breath in your lungs again, wondering if maybe will I ever get up again? If that's where you find yourself, I need you to hear the message of God where he says, I know life can be difficult sometimes. Nevertheless, don't you give up. Don't you quit. Don't you throw in the towel because something is coming. Someone is coming. Darkness, despair, heartache, oppression, they don't get the last word. Your story doesn't end there. And then God gives this incredible promise, and I pray that you hear it, and you hear it with a new freshness today. He says this, nevertheless, and look what he says next, that time of darkness and despair, it will not go on forever. I I love this. This is God's way of saying, hey, even when things seem their darkest, I want to let you know that there is a day coming. There's a day marked on your calendar, on my calendar, where everything's going to change. If you're anything like me, this is the reason I love Advent calendars so much. Or maybe you make the little paper chains with your kids. You know, you get to take a chain off every day and it gets closer. and Your excitement begins to build. Why? Because Christmas is coming. And I'm not just excited about the presents. I'm excited about all of what it means. And each day it gets closer and each day it gets closer and each day it gets closer until finally that day arrives. The day of celebration. In much the same way, God looks to us and he says, I know things have been hard. I know things have been challenging and they can be in life sometimes, but don't you give up because the long awaited day is almost here. (laughs) When I was getting ready for this message, I feel like God laid it on my heart to make sure that some people here and some people watching us online, the entire reason you're here is to hear this message. You need to hear this message at that time of darkness and despair, it won't go on forever. I know sometimes it feels like it, and you'd sit here and look back at me, Keith, you don't know my family. My family's always been this way, they're always going to be this way. You don't know my neighbors, you don't know what it's like in my workplace. It's always going to be that. I know there's that part of us that tends to argue back, but my friends, there's a God who at Christmas time reminds us that he always keeps his promises, and that darkness, despair, and hopelessness do not get the last word. This time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. Why? Because of this. A child is born to us. A son is given to us. Cool, Keith. A baby born 2,000 years ago. What in the world does that have to do with me? It actually has everything to do with you. Because this is where hope comes from. Because this is no ordinary baby, my friends. This is someone so much greater that our minds could ever ever begin to conceive. And so God, through his messenger Isaiah, actually says, let me make sure you understand who it is that I'm sending on your behalf. And this is how he's described. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That is why you can have hope. This is why hope is available to us, not just as something you do, but as something you can have. Because that Messiah, that Savior has come for you. And you're like, great, Keith, cool, lots of names. But my friends, there is so much meaning in those names. And each of these names and the meanings of these names bring so much hope to us. And I want to make sure that we grasp this. The first thing we're told is that we have a wonderful counselor. In other words, someone who can give us wisdom and counsel for our lives. 
And maybe for some of you right now, you ever needed wisdom or counsel for a decision before? <laughs> how to get over a hurt? How to find healing for some brokenness? Maybe just what to do? Should I take this job? Should I marry this person? All these questions that we sometimes have. My friends, I've got great news for you. If you've ever needed wisdom or counsel for a decision before, you're not stuck with some random advice that you found on social media. You're not left with some insight from some TV personality. According to God's message and his message of hope at Christmas, you have access to the incredible wisdom and counsel of Jesus. And it's not just regular counsel, it's this wonderful counselor. I, I thought about that. This wonderful counselor. For me, I use the word wonderfully a little different than the passage does. It says, I use it like this, you know, the service at this restaurant was wonderful, or your children behaved wonderfully. And sometimes we think about it like this, but my friends, when it talks about Jesus as a wonderful counselor, it's not meaning it like that. This word wonderful means to marvel or something miraculous, something incomprehensible. In other words, we have access to someone with so much wisdom, so much insight, so much counsel that our minds can't even begin to grasp how brilliant and wise and intelligent he is. I thought about how best to describe this to you, and I thought really the best way that I know how to is with an emoji. So if you're not an emoji fan, too bad. You'll get over it, okay? But here's the emoji that came to mind for me with this one. Anyone seen this before, right? What does it mean? Your mind is blown, right? And I thought about that. When you're trying to describe to someone something incredible that happened, oh man, you should have seen my move on the court. It was incredible. It was like mind blown. I don't even know how to describe it. Or you should have this gift that I opened up. Or man, when the Bears came back and they won, it was, that story's going to happen one day. I believe it. Okay, so hold on with me, okay? But when something happens in your life and you don't even have the words to describe it, you can't even put into words how amazing it is. This is what we're starting to get to when we see that Jesus is a wonderful counselor. <laughs> in other words, his insight, his counsel is so great, it's so amazing, it's beyond description that we can't even put it into words. I think sometimes we misread this. This passage is not saying that Jesus is someone who's good at giving advice. That's not what this means. It means that there is someone who is so brilliant, so wise, that he can understand things that are beyond our finite ability to even grasp, that his wisdom and his counsel is so much greater than we could ever even imagine. So, so I'm here to tell you, my friends, right now, if you're in need of counsel, if you're in need of wisdom, you have a wonderful counselor who is abundantly qualified to guide and direct your life. Someone who is never confused. He's never mistaken. He never sits up in heaven going, I wonder what I should do now. <laughs> he's always there and he will never lead you astray. You have a wonderful counselor. But you also have a, a mighty God. Did you hear that? I think this one's a little bit of a stretch for us at Christmas to grasp because when we think about Jesus coming, sometimes we think about him, there's a little tiny baby, right? Oh, just in a major little cute baby Jesus, right? And he tickles little tummy and touches little toes. And, and that's incredible. It's an important part of our story for Christmas. But I think sometimes we think of Jesus at Christmas, we think he's kind of a mini version of God, like smaller God came. But my friends, nothing could be further from the truth that when God sent his son Jesus to this earth, he came in all of his fullness, all of his majesty, all of his might, all of his glory and power. The, the God that the heavens cannot contain, somehow he came and made himself in the form of a little tiny baby. Colossians 1, 15 says it like this, or 19 says this, for God was pleased to have all of his fullness dwell in him. All of his power, all of his might, all of his majesty, all of his influence. And my friends, I think sometimes we, we have a hard time grasping how powerful and incredible God truly is that he came to us in this way. So I thought about how do I best describe it to us? How do we best try to grasp the power and the majesty and might of Jesus? And, and I thought about this. I thought, well, who are some people that we consider powerful in our world today? Who are some people that we would look to and say, man, they've got influence. They can swing things. They can make stuff happen in the world. And so I thought I'd share a few of them with you, okay? But what about this person? Anyone heard of her before? Her name is Oprah. Oprah's got a little bit of power, doesn't she? I mean, if she just mentions your book on her show, you're an overnight millionaire. She's made entire careers, Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz. Uh, a few years ago, she bought stock in Weight Watchers and it jumped 100%. And we all wished we had bought stock before she did that. Oprah's a pretty powerful person. Oh, what about this guy? Hey, Steph Curry, anyone ever heard of him before? 
I mean, the entire basketball world has changed. He's hitting 30-foot shots and all this stuff. I mean, he's a multiple-time champion. He's changed the game of basketball. Uh, what about this next guy? You think he's got a little bit of power? What's his name again? Yeah, Elon Musk. I mean, he just got money to burn. He buys Twitter just for fun, it feels like, right? I mean, this guy's got enormous amount of power and influence in this world. Just one more. What about this lady? You know, Taylor Swift, right? She revealed just a few weeks ago that she's going to do a concert and shut the internet down. Like no one can get tickets and everyone's upset and they're spending hundreds if not thousands of dollars for tickets. And she's a very powerful person. If you don't believe me, you date Taylor Swift. And if you're mean to her, she will dump you and she will write a song about how bad of a person you are and everyone will know what a low down dirty scoundrel you are. That is a lot of power. The whole world will know you. Hey, my friends, in this world, there's a lot of people who have power. Money power, sports power, financial power, songwriting power. But friends, I'm here to tell you that none of them hold a candle to Jesus. None of them can forgive your sins. None of them can give you a purpose and plan for their life. None of them can triumph over death, sin, hell, and the grave. Can I get an amen? But there is a God who can, and his name is Jesus. And he came to us to be mighty God. And this matters so much because I know that for many of you, you go, Keith, I've got some big problems in my life. I know they're big, but they're not bigger than the mighty God. They're not bigger than the one who has come for us. And this word mighty God can actually be translated mightiest God. It's not just saying God's mighty. It's saying he is the mightiest that there ever is. He's also everlasting father. And for some of you, this is kind of a stretch, right? Um, I don't know what your experience with your dad was like, but this means that he cares for you like a good father should care for his kids. I know that some of us didn't have that experience in life. I was actually blessed to have a dad that cared for us really, really well. And one of my favorite memories is at Christmas time when we would gather around trees, not like these trees, but I loved sitting with my daddy in this recliner in the living room and I would like curl up in a little ball as a little boy and we would stand there and look at the lights and the bulbs on the tree. Now, it was so incredible to have this care from a father. And my friends, I want you to know that that's the kind of care that your heavenly father has for you that he wraps his arms around you. He loves you and he cares for you. And he's not just a father, he's an everlasting father. And this speaks to the duration of his care for you. There will never be a time or a moment where he stops loving you, where he doesn't do for you, where he doesn't care for you, where he doesn't provide for you. He's a father whose love for you is everlasting. But he's also a, a prince of peace. For us, we may look at the world around us and say, man, peace is more like the absence of chaos, but that's not what this means. This type of peace is a word called shalom, and it literally means wholeness or completeness. And it means no matter what is going on around me, there's a peace within me. Why? Because somehow God has my whole world firmly in his hands. It's a settled stillness and a calmness that no matter what's going on in my job and in my family and in my life, I can have peace. Why? Because a Savior has come for me and He is that Prince of Peace. Now, friends, this is the reason you have for hope. No matter what your life is like, no matter what you've gone through, no matter what you've seen, no matter what this Christmas has already brought your way, I know there are some things that have happened, but my friends, I'm here to remind you that we have a hope because a Savior has come. And He's a wonderful counselor. He's a mighty God. He's an everlasting Father. And He's your Prince of Peace. This is why despair and darkness and oppression and heartache don't get the last word. Because a Savior has come for you and me. And no matter how you say it and what language you say it, It's a beautiful truth that has changed lives and can still change lives right here and right now for all eternity. We asked some of our friends to share the hope of Jesus in their own language, in their own tongue. And this is one of my favorite things. So we have a video I'd like to show you in just a minute. And I pray that you have your heart open to hear these words of Jesus, these names of Jesus, and no matter what language, what background you come from, that you'll start to hear the hope that come through the names of the Savior who's been given for you. Check it out. He is called. Yohak Lechut. El Sayama. Ilate Apali. Ang tawag sa kanya. Wonderful Counselor. Chidave Consultant. Consejero Maravilloso. 
a merveilleux conseil, kahangahang ang tagapagpayo. Mighty God, Mots ni ba? Dios poderoso. Dieu puissant, makapangyarihang Dios. Everlasting Father, Vich ni ba ko? Padre eterno. Per eternal, walang hanggang ama. Prince of Peace. Knyaj Mire. Príncipe de la Paz. Prince de la Paix. Príncipe ng Kapayapaan. Jesus. 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 Cristo. Isn't that good? I love that. Hey, let me ask you a question, and it's the last question, then we're going to get ready to go. Um, hey, how's your hope this, this Christmas? How is it? It's the last few moments before Christmas, and if you were to kind of have a hope meter in your life, where would it rate right now? Some of you are kind of low on hope. Some of you are doing okay, a little better than others, but no matter where you find yourself this Christmas, I want to let you know that there's a chance for you to walk out of here, not just with hope as something you do when you gather before your presence or the family gets together. You can walk out of here with a hope you can possess because a Savior has come for you and for me. I want to give you an opportunity in just a minute to ask that question of yourself in your own life. For some of you, if you're really honest, there's some things that you've been dealing with in your life, some things that you need wisdom and counsel for. If that's the case for you, I've got good news. There's a wonderful counselor who's been given for you. For some of you, you have some situations in your life that are bigger than you. You can't handle it. They're too big. You've tried and you've failed. And you feel like, I don't know where else to go. I feel kind of hopeless. My friends, if there's something too big for you, I'm so thankful to let you know there's a mighty God who's been given. It may be too big for you, but it's not too big for him. For some of you, it's that everlasting father that you would so love for there to be love and care in your life. And, and yet there hasn't been. I've got good news for you. There's an everlasting father who's come for you. And for others of us, our world has just kind of been in chaos. If that's the case for you, I'd love to introduce you to the Prince of Peace. In just a moment, we're going to pray. But I think the most important thing for us to ask ourselves a question is this. It's one thing to talk about Jesus coming to the world. It's another thing to think about how Jesus has come for you. And that's what I want you to know. That if you're here today and you're struggling with hope, my prayer for you is that you will make that decision, not just to know Jesus as a Savior, a Savior of the world, but to know Jesus as my Savior. To know what it's like for him to come and be your savior into your life. You want to talk about the greatest Christmas gift of all time? The greatest gift that I can imagine you finding and discovering is the hope of a savior who has come for you. So in just a few moments, we're going to give you that opportunity. If you've never made that commitment or maybe you've wandered away in this Christmas, you know that you need to return to hope. You need to return to Jesus. We want to give you a chance to do just that. But for others of us, there's just a moment in time where you need to reach out and sing praises because he has been your savior and he has been so good to you. We're going to do that in just a few minutes as well. Hey, I want to invite you to do something. When you came in today, there was a card on your seat. I want to invite you to just to grab that for a moment if you'd be so kind. Online, we've got some digital options for you as well if you look at the description in the video. But here's what I just want to invite you to do. For some of you, this is that moment, this is that time for you to make that decision to come back to hope, to come back to Jesus and to experience the life the hope, the Savior that has come for you. And in just a few minutes, we're going to bow our heads and we're going to close our eyes and we're going to pray. And I'm going to invite you to make that decision if you've never made it before or if you need to recommit your life to Jesus Christ. But tonight's decision night, this is that opportunity for Christmas to be a Christmas unlike any other, a Christmas for you to be filled with hope. So would you do me a favor today? Would you just bow your heads with me at this very moment and at this very time? Hey, if, if you're here in this place, and when we were talking, you knew that there was something that felt like it was coming right to your heart. And that there's a moment in this time and right here and right now, you're hearing the voice of Jesus speak to you and you want to make that commitment to Christ. I want to invite you to do that in just a minute. And on the count of three with no one looking around, I'm just going to invite you to raise your hand if that's the decision, the commitment that you want to make. And it sounds a little something like this, Lord Jesus, I need you to be my savior. Would you come into my life? Would you be my Lord? And this Christmas, would you be the hope of my life? I surrender all that I have to you. 
If that's a decision you want to make, you can just in your own heart express that to him in whatever way you need to. No matter if you've never done it before, if today you want to recommit your life, now is a perfect time to do that. So on the count of three, if that's the case for you, I'm going to invite you with every head bowed and every eye closed just to raise your hand. Number one, God loves you. He sent a savior for you. Number two, he's calling and inviting you to come to know him as your savior today. And number three, if that's the case, would you just raise your hand right here and right now in this place? Amen and amen. Amen. You can put your hands down. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful for how it is that you are moving in this place, that a Savior has been born for us, that Lord Jesus, you have come in this place. And so Lord, in this time, as we prepare in just a moment to sing, that we are going to adore you, that we're going to come before you and say that we're going to praise your name forever. Lord Jesus, we are humbled and honored that in this Christmas we could be filled with hope no matter what we came into, no matter where we came from, no matter what baggage it is that we are bringing with us today, that you are a God that has come to us. Thank you for being a wonderful counselor. Thank you for being a mighty God. Thank you for being an everlasting father. Thank you for being our Prince of Peace. Lord Jesus, for those who have made a decision today, our heart is just overjoyed. This is what it's all about. So Lord Jesus, for those who are still thinking and considering it, and this Christmas, in the moments that remain, would you make your presence even more aware to them so that we can know the hope that you bring this Christmas. Lord Jesus, we believe you for it all, and we ask it in your name. Amen and amen.